All right, people, welcome in. Happy Monday here on this December 23rd. Tick tock, tick tock to the end of the year. Uh, Christmas just around the corner. I want to wish you and yours a, uh, a very safe and happy holiday as we get ready for a little bit of a break here in college basketball due to the fact that, yeah, you know, it's the holidays and hell, even college basketball players get to go home and spend a little time with the family. Uh, but be rest assured. Come Saturday, uh, we'll be back uh, on the hard court here, getting ready from uh, a week to today and basically right through March Madness, guys. We'll have you each and every uh, day during the week there, getting you caught up with everything in college hoops. But we do have, of course, some uh, some action from over the weekend, some craziness as usual. Joined by uh, the legend himself, Mr. Ralph Michaels, wagertalk.com. And uh, Ralph, to say it was a crazy weekend in college hoops heading into this mini holiday break, I think that's an understatement. Well, Joe, we talked about, you know, we have this this time period now where some of the student sections aren't there. And you could see by, uh, you know, uh, when, when we're going to show the number of upsets, there was 21 upsets on Saturday by mm -hmm. dogs of two and a half or more. And there were nine yesterday. So that's 30 upsets in the past two days, you know, in college basketball. So that puts perspective in, into your handicapping mix when, you know, when the student sections aren't there, the home games are a little different. There's distractions. Uh, so, you know, it, it's a good time to look at dogs and, and those row teams and, you know, you'll see there from the biggest upsets, uh, you know, Florida AMU, not a team a lot of people know, and Seattle not either from the WAC. But, uh, you know, St. John's knocking off Arizona. Yeah. Nebraska yeah. going down. You know, Nebraska's the same team that lost to Riverside game one, and Nebraska's the same team that, you know, beat Purdue at home. Yep. So, uh, you know, that's what happens when you have a team like Nebraska that returns zero starters and has a new head coach. You know, you have some transfer talent that occasionally plays well together, and you have the times where they struggle. And you know, and of course, you've been you've been fading that Virginia team a few times and looking at Sunday's games. Yeah. And South Carolina did what they had another game. Uh, you know, Virginia giving up seventy points, still a big injury on that Cavaliers side, and and it makes a difference. You know, yeah. and Duquesne on Sunday as well. Duquesne's a team that, you know, I I played on earlier and yes um you know at home they're they're a team that under keith dambot the the former coach of akron I, I really like but you're playing in a neutral setting against a proven uab team and you know you you can go down well, I, and uh, just keep in mind some of those neutral site games, guys. That, uh, that's that's going to be big. Uh, it is important, I guess, to know, Ralph, too. Once uh, once it all gets back to normal here uh, over the weekend and next week, it's really starting to dive back into uh, its conference play, really, from here on out. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, next time we talk, uh, you know, next Saturday, uh, next Saturday is – uh, yeah, I'm looking. Some are conferences, some are not. But uh, like Sunday is West Virginia, Ohio State, Kansas, oh. Stanford. So oh, they're right. not. So they're waiting to the 31st. The first, yeah, sec. By the by, the time we get to the first and the second, everything will be all conference play. Going from conference uh, straight up there. So obviously, some of the biggest upsets there, and of course. Uh, you know, some of the uh, largest uh, covers, too, there, Ralph. Uh, you know, we talked about it, of course, uh, and you, you should take note of the asterisks here, guys, in the overs. When uh, when a team is over by 80 and a half points, there's, <laughs> there's usually a reason for it, Ralph, and I'm going to guess the three stars there indicate we had not one, not two, uh, but uh, three overtimes by our friends at Tulsa. Is that correct? Yep, yeah, that would be three. And then the Towson game that went over by 36 points had yep. one overtime. So <laughs> San Fran, UC Davis, 33 points without one. Yep. That's as shocking as any because, you know, UC Davis, one of the very slow Temple teams, you know, Michigan's team that, uh, you know, now Lord Langford's not coming back. Right. And while, while I thought they'd be the best team in the country with him, at least now they can move forward. There's mm -hmm. no more guessing. Guys that were playing aren't thinking, well, I'm going to lose my spot anyway. Now it's next man up. And, you know, I, th that actually can help a team know what they're going to have. Obviously, not having him will hurt in the March Madness, having that experienced guy on the court against veteran defenses. But, you know, you saw him have a good win piece together that knowing who's on the court is going to play. And, 
that sometimes happens when you find out what your star has. And, you know, Minnesota, Oklahoma State, another two teams we've talked about that, yeah, that number have had stunk. great games and bad game. You yeah. know, I, I know – you're an alum, right, from Oklahoma yep. State, and we talked about how they missed the guy, their big guy in the middle, then yep. they got him back, and then they played a good game, and then they played a bad game, and boom, you know, Minnesota, another tourney veteran team with a good coach and uh, a neutral setting, and, and one team just ran away with it. And also a crushing scout. You know, that line stunk to me at four. I'm going, ooh, that just there's something wrong with that line. Minnesota, we've talked about it. You know, they, it's not like they've been uh, ducking anybody. Minnesota's played actually a pretty decent schedule thus far. Uh, number nine in the country. Yeah, yeah. that's not bad. Uh, you know, top 50 teams they faced. Mm. Oklahoma, Butler, DePaul just outside of it. Iowa, mm -hmm. Ohio State, and Oklahoma State. So, you know, you, you've played you've played those things. And then, you know, that's that's what you get when you have a, a guy like Rick Pitino. Takes over, yep. had a great, great program his first years. But then Minnesota fell back into the eight category, and they had 15 wins one year. And, you know, coming off a 22-win season, they wanted to test themselves. They know strength of schedule matters. You're probably playing in the best basketball division this year. Um, big you know, we, yep. we've gone back and forth between ACC and even the Big 12s popped up there. But I think the Big 10 clearly, I mean, especially with North Carolina being a middle of the road team with their injuries and yep. and who they have. I think Big 10 is so far and above a way that if you play 500 in Big 10 action this year, I think I think you're making the tournament. How shocked were you that uh, Villanova uh, took down Kansas? I mean, they were a short dog anyway but maybe the more important thing is that it went 35 and a half under yeah that's villanova you know they're a slow-paced team and you know the problem is joe on this show on friday what mm -hmm. did we say i said i'm taking villanova if they get plus three and a half yeah it came just short of that so i didn't back them but clearly i liked them yep. and that's another kansas first road game it's yep. You know, listen, guys, it's not easy. You 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 get a very fake record and a very <laughs> fake uh, a very fake satisfaction with wins after win after wins against poor teams on the road or maybe in a neutral setting. And mm -hmm. I'm not saying can Kansas played a crappy schedule. I mean, they played Duke. They lost to Duke, but you know they had never gone on a true road game. And you go and in, you go into Villanova, and uh, you know again you've got five star recruits this year, and you have Jay Wright, and you have a uh, the Fenaren Pavilion. You have you know six thousand people just packed on top of you. That's what a third of what Kansas normally plays in front of. Yep. But you got six thousand people. That makes it sound like there's twenty thousand because of the venue you're in. So. Um, you know, again, no surprise if you know for those that watch the show on Friday. Yep, no, really good, uh, really good job there. We talked to you about, of course, uh, on Sunday there, South Carolina and Virginia. Uh, you really, I mean, seventy points and sixty, almost sixty points there, twenty-one and a half points over the number there, Ralph, uh, uh, against the spread. I, I, you know, who saw that coming? We kind of felt like it was happening, but even still, if Virginia was going to lose, you thought they'd be losing in the fifties, not the seventies. Yeah, well, you look at Purdue. They yep. lost to Purdue. They lost 69 to 40. Yep. So, uh, you know, and let me look at let me look at their offenses real quick. Uh, Purdue, I mean, excuse me, Virginia has not played a top 40 offense this year. Wow. So, you know, Virginia Tech is close to that range. And, you know, you're going to get a team like NC State or Florida State coming up here where, yep. you know, yeah, their numbers are good, but their numbers are so good because I, I'm looking, you know, their their average opponent, they played the number 180 schedule. So, again, no elite offenses, yep. a bunch of mediocre offenses. We'll see what happens, how good that defense is when they start playing that. And, you know, I don't know what the expectations of Braxton, Braxton Key is. He's missed five starts and he's missed three games overall. He's played some partial minutes and he's clearly an integral part to that team and defense. Yeah, I mean, when, uh, you know, New Mexico there, Houston Baptist, uh, 20 and a half over, right? We got 107 points on the board to 88, like an NBA game. Well, uh, New Mexico is one of the best offensive teams in the yep. country. You've been saying that you know, for how long now? <laughs> yeah, uh, again, I, I I loved what I read about him going into this year. 
Paul Weir to me is a coach that I love. Jaquan Lyle is a name I've mentioned here. Mm -hmm. He's an Ohio State transfer, you know, and he just gives them a legitimate, legitimate offense that he runs the ball well and they have pace. Temple wise, they're they're a top fifty team. And you know, they're legit. They're twelve and two losses mm -hmm. to UTEP and Auburn. Um, you know, UTEP on the road and Auburn in a neutral setting. So, you know, they very well, they may very well way get to a 25 win team. And, you know, I don't, they'll, they'll probably have to win the Mountain West, but I don't know. You get to 20, you get to 25 wins. Yep. You know, they're, they're the type of team that their number may not be there, you know, and when I'm looking at, when I'm looking at a top 40 team to make the tournament, obviously you need what the top there's 20, 20 divisions. Yep. So 68 teams. So you need to be in the top 48 mm -hmm. non-division winners and they're going to be close. And basically I do this. I, you know, everyone has a different way to tell who deserves to make a tournament and I don't look at wins. I just basically say, you know, that 48th team my power ratings, would I put you as a favorite on a neutral setting or not? And I don't care how many wins you have. Right. That's that's the eye test to me is if you're the better team as far as on a neutral setting, who would I bet if the game were pick? And it's interesting, too, because that number was you won't often find uh, totals at the 175 range. <laughs> and they still blew by it there uh, by uh, by 20 and a half. So two offensive powerhouses, and you're right. New Mexico have been talking about uh, the entire season long, guys. And again, the whole reason why we do this here, why we review this is so you can start get uh, you know get familiar with some of these teams, some of the names that we are about to, uh, to throw your way, including some of the best uh, performances by guys. Ralph, quite honestly, some names that we have uh, talked about, some new names here. Um, and, uh, you know, some uh, some old reliables here, but without a doubt, we're talking about you know when when you talk about Oregon and and Peyton, uh, Peyton Pritchard, it's a it's a name probably you guys should get to know at this point. Yeah, you know, Joe, just jumping back to that Houston Baptist New Mexico yes. total. Um, basically, you have the perfect storm with Houston Baptist. You're zero and ten. <laughs> yep. Your your defense is number three fifty two out of three fifty three. And you're the fastest paced team in the country. So uh, they have given up. I, I am I am looking at their last eight games. 107, 96, 96, 113, 99, 112, 111, and 103. Their best performance on defense was the opener Tulsa. Wow. They only lost. 80 to 72. Wow. See, per like you said, perfect storm, guys. That's what that's what I'm talking about. Oh, and 10 team put up 90 points. Crazy stuff. Uh, yeah. Oregon, yeah. Texas, uh, Texas Southern. Peyton Pritchard doing it again. 29 points, six assists. And we know how you love them steals, Ralph. You love them steals. Don't get any better. And you got a dude that's putting up 29, 5, 6, and 4 on you. Yeah. You know, uh, to, to me, steals are a game changer. Mm -hmm. You know, you saw Mark, you know, looking down on Sundays, just jumping ahead to Andrew Taylor. That was in a loss, but you know, Marshall was competitive in that U and I game, and uh, uh, five, four, and four. You know, when you have those point guards that can get the assist and the steals, they're mm -hmm. certainly I love. And seventeen rebounds for Omar Yerstvin yes. from uh, the Swedish guy yeah. out of Georgetown to Samford. 32-17 is a number with four blocks, so let's give them the block love. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I got to give, uh, got to give them credit over at Georgetown. Patrick Ewan and company holding it together, uh, having to deal with nothing but uh, drama. Uh, just you know, a couple of weeks ago, transfers, guys quit and moving on. It's uh, it's amazing that he's been able to keep the team uh, together as well as he has. Yeah, we were talking. It was back Wednesday, December fourth. Mm -hmm. They were playing your Oklahoma State team That's on the road. Right. Yep. And their point guard was kicked off the team, plus two other players. So what do they do since that point? They beat Oklahoma State, beat SMU on the road, mm -hmm. they beat Syracuse, they beat Maryland, Baltimore County, and now they beat Samford. Yep. They're five and zero since that time. Crazy. So there's there's times when a player, even if he's a very good player, is a cancer a cancerous effect on a team. And it really can be a gelling force. Listen, guys, we got rid of we got rid of the dead weight. We're positive from here on out. Let's go play good ball. 
And boy, Patrick Ewing has done a hell of a job. Yep, yep, absolutely. And of course, we've got, uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention uh, our friend from the Mount Rushmore State uh, there at South Dakota, Ralph Michaels, uh, Tyler Hagedorn on Sunday, taking on UMKC. I feel like I'm always talking about UMKC here. 29 points, nine boards, one steal. Just had to throw out a little South Dakota love here for us. Well, you know, let's let's jump up. Jordan yep. Giles for yep. Kansas City. Yes, 37, you know, 37 minutes, 25 points, 5 2 3 2. Look so, you know, how often Joe, we put up this stat line every day. Yep. How often has someone had multiples in each stat line? Crazy. Uh, it's the first yesterday and mm -hmm. it 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 happens maybe once a week. So, when you can have multiple assists, multiple steals, and multiple blocks. Mm -hmm. There's no surprise Missouri County goes into South Dakota and gets that win last yesterday. Yep. And, of course, uh, Ralph, you know, they came out with a new poll, and there's got to be a new number one, and uh, the Zags seem to be that new number one at this particular point. We've watched every other number one, and it was some ridiculous number that, I mean, to have – the number ones go down to unranked teams like we have seen. I mean, hell, I don't even think Kentucky's ranked anymore at this point after losing over the weekend to Ohio State. But uh, the Zags are a team. I am shocked it took this long to get them up to number one this year. But, I mean, what can you say about them? Certainly deserving of that number one spot at the moment. Yeah, I, you know, someone reached out to me on Twitter and asked me, you know, what the numbers were, and I and I ran them this far, Joe, and it's not as bad. It's not, I mean, not as crazy as you think. You know, Michigan State, Duke, and then Louisville, and now Kansas. But mm -hmm. uh, if you played against the number one every game this year, you're only seven and five against the spread. Oh, okay. Well, that's now, not too crazy. You're you're four and eight on the on the money line. So I guess you know there were. You know, uh, let me look at the straight up losses. Well, Binghamton, you wouldn't even gotten a money line. Right. Seton Hall against Michigan State, they were a five point dog. Yep. Um, Cal Duke, a 19 and a half point. Georgia Tech Duke, a 13. Winthrop against Duke, a 24. Michigan against Louisville, six. And Pitt against Louisville, 12 and a half. And mm -hmm. then Eastern Kentucky. Um, yeah, so some of those you wouldn't even gotten money lines. But so uh, you know, there's a lot of talk about number ones and the curse. But again, right now you're only seven and five if you bet against every number one. And the lines are going to get tighter as they get in the conference play. So. Um, don't fall in that trap, but think it's easy money just to do that. Uh, and I will, too. I'll bring it up also. Another uh, team from uh, out your area there, uh, Ralph, a team you've talked about for a while, I believe, was in uh, was in Vegas there. Uh, this San Diego State team, um, the, keep bringing them up, Ralph. They won't go away, man. I mean, this is a team that is – they can play. I mean, they can flat out play, and they can keep up with just about anybody. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's going to be uh, – it's going to be a hell of a Mountain West mm -hmm. with with Utah State, who was who was the clear preseason favorite, and then San Diego State in New Mexico. You have three very good teams that are, you know, all top seventy style teams. San Diego State, you know, at twelve and zero, they just got by San Jose State. They had a, a close win, and then you know what happens? They they blow out Utah in a neutral setting. Yep. Uh, they have Cal Poly this weekend. They're off to this weekend, but um, Creighton, you know, Iowa, BYU. I mean, Kentucky. You know, they've got a pretty decent resume. Yeah, no question. And and you're looking now, and uh, another week has passed, and, and Duquesne lost. So mm -hmm. we are now down to three undefeated teams. That is the the aforementioned San Diego State and Auburn. And let's not forget about the Liberty Flames Absolutely. and the job Richie McKay has done. Mm -hmm. Now, yep. I will say this. Liberty has played the number 327 schedule. Mm -hmm. And their toughest opponent was Akron, who comes in about, you know, over 100. So mm -hmm. they haven't faced a top 100 foe. We'll see what the line is when they uh, when they play LSU. They, yep. they go on the road. This is their second road game, and they did they did go to Vanderbilt and they beat Vanderbilt. So that wasn't you know that's not a bad win when we're talking the Flames. But um, you know you're going to see a team twenty. You're probably going you're going to see a thirty win team with Liberty. So 
big uh, time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, a loss at LSU and they, they very well could run the table in the in Atlantic Sun Conference. Yep. Yep, and going to have some wins here. It's going to be interesting to watch this uh, unfold here as it uh, as it comes along. And, you know, it's funny, Ralph, some of the teams that we keep talking about, um, you know, Colorado we've talked about from the beginning of the year. They get past uh, Dayton in overtime, um, you know, coming through. A lot of these teams, the San Diego States, the New Mexico, a lot of these teams are starting to, you know, find their groove and come the first of the year now, and certainly during conference play, it's going to be very interesting to see how these teams mature. And then you got teams like Kentucky who people are just, they've stuck a fork in them and saying that they, they just can't be fixed at this point, Ralph. They are what they are. Yeah, you know, they are Kentucky and, and North Carolina, you know, teams that are overrated. You know, when we're talking mid, mid majors, obviously, you know, we've mentioned this before. I don't count Gonzaga or Butler in that right. mix. Right. But, you know, the names people should know are, you know, Dayton, mm, Dayton. San Diego State, um, looking down the list, you know, Xavier, yep, Marquette, Big East teams. I don't know if you're counting those or not, you know. Uh, but Dayton and San Diego State are clearly the the two group of the non the non power teams or mid majors that people should have in their head that are are teams that are legitimate teams that can beat anyone mm. on any given day in, in college hoops. Yep, going to be important come uh, come March, that's for sure. So, not uh, the, a small card on the uh, on the roll here uh, today, Ralph. I'm not sure if you uh uh, if you got anything out there that you like or that you've uh, you've pulled up here, but there's of course not a lot of uh, not a lot of blue bloods or uh, top 25 teams uh, on the card here today. Short card, and then a guys again, you know, until Saturday. Uh, of course, it's going to be a very uh, you know very light situation here. Most teams off until the weekend here, just after Christmas. So uh, there are a few games of interest here, Ralph, coming up. I don't know if you pulled up a trend or an angle here for yeah, any one I, of these. I've got I've got a couple trends that I'll read off and then tell us if anything's happening in the market after that. Shoot. You know, Georgia State is a team that, uh, you know, I like today. They've gone 15 and four their last 19 games against the spread. They're a team learning a new coaching system, but Ron Hunter left for Tulane and didn't leave the cupboard bare. San Francisco, 16, five and one over under at home. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's a game where they're going to be playing a slower place team in Fresno State. Fresno, uh, I say slower paced team, but Fresno's eight and one over under. So, you know, their last nine. Uh, Siena has won five straight at home, and Georgia's gone nine and two over under their last 11. Yep. How about the markets, Joe? Anything uh, light card, but uh, any any interest in any games? A lot of love being thrown towards Georgia Tech against Houston today here, Ralph. Uh, they opened up as a eight, eight and a half point dog, but uh, the <laughs> Screw money. Screw that team. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> it just seems to go, Ralph. I, and I don't know what's uh, what the what else is going here, too. By the way, uh, you mentioned Georgia State, and yet it, they opened up as a seven and a half point dog, Ralph. It's it's move up to nine. There's a lot of SMU love happening right now. I don't know why everyone seems to be in love with SMU at this point in the season. Yeah, I, I'm not either. They're off back to back losses. But for those that that why I say Georgia screw Georgia Tech is. You know, again, guys, this is a full disclosure team. College basketball, I'm going to have yep. 300 plays in a season, mm -hmm. and I am going to lose 140 of those games. So there's good, there's losses, and of there's course. good losses and the bad losses. But I had a 5% play on Georgia Tech <laughs> last week against Ball State. So they're at home, Ball State making one of their first road games. And it's 65-47. I'm on the short end of an 18-point loss. So then what happens? Georgia Tech goes and, and beats Boise 74 mm -hmm. to 60 on Sunday. And then Ball State goes out and gets crushed against Washington. I'm afraid to play against them because they look so good. And I, I, I like Washington, but I don't use them because it's 85-64. So, <laughs> you know, there, there's times when, you know, if you're right, mm -hmm. you're going you're gonna to kill that team again. I would have faded Ball State against Washington, no question. But since they look so good, you can't fade them back-to-back -back games because was it a fluke that they played that bad or did they really put something together in the break? Well, it was a fluke and I was on the wrong end of that of that loss. So again, you, you look back and you're. it's one of those games where 
You don't know if it was a bad loss or a fluke until the next game, but that's important to know. And even going back and thinking, did I handicap that game totally wrong? Right. Or, or was it just one of those? Not, these are 18-year-old kids. Every Any given night, someone, some one team can have a great night, one can have a poor night. So it shows you the next game where each team returned to their normal to, to the to their median or their normal line and and the results were as such Washington beating Ball State and Georgia Tech beating Boise. So am I fading Ball State tomorrow against UTEP there on the neutral side or what am I doing there with Ball well, State exactly? You know, <laughs> I, you know it, it, it's it, that's tonight and you know that that's a situation play where mm -hmm. you know I, I I look I look at UTEP okay mm -hmm. and you look at UTEP. And they were in a game against Hawaii where three guys played over 35 30, minutes yep, yep. because they were in a nip and tuck game against, against them. But Ball State, nobody played over 34 minutes. Mm -hmm. They were in a 19-point loss that they were, um, you know, the thing, they were actually winning at halftime, Ball State was. That can't be right. Were they? Uh oh no! No, there's there's a mistake here on this on this box score I'm looking at because that 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 box score is wrong. Um, when you're adding up the scores, it, it's reversed. So yeah. they were down and they they played they played eight guys between 17 and 33 minutes. Yep. So no, I would not fade Ball State because of the back to back games in the tournament. And one team was in a nip and tuck game with multiple players playing 34 or more minutes against a team that got blown out, that spread out their minutes, and nobody played over 34 minutes. So in a neutral setting with rest, yes, I would fade them. Because of the situation, I would not be playing against them. Situational, yep. Uh, one and a half points here tonight, uh, 130 Eastern time, guys. It's in, Hawaii, it's in Hawaii, I believe, Ralph. Is that the uh, Christmas tournament there? What is that? Where are no, they, that, that where, game is. Um, where is that UTEP uh, game? Um, it's because it's neutral, okay. and I'm trying to find out it's where that. At San, it's at San Sheriff Arena in in Hawaii. Yeah, it's. It is in a, It is the Hawaii. Yeah, because it's or not the Maui, the Honolulu. Yes. The, yeah, so that's yeah. 11:30 your time, but that'll be 1:30 on the East Coast time there. Uh, so that's also guys something that you can include on the card. And Ball State is getting some love here at this particular point. Uh, as is, and this is an interesting game here uh, tonight, Ralph, too, that um, uh, that seems to be getting an awful lot of love. Fresno State opened up as a one-point favorite against San Fran, the Dons, our team there, the Dons, who, again, I'm still trying to uh, wash that San, that San Fran, uh, the Dons versus the Stanford Cardinals game off of me. Uh, but it's flipped, man. It's now a two-point favorite to uh, to San Francisco here. Do you agree with the uh, with the line move? I do, uh, you know, just just as an eye, just as an eye test game, I, I clearly think San Francisco is the better team. And you know, you look; these two haven't played in a while. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's still the localness of this. And uh, boy, you look at what San Francisco's done. I mean, they had they've had a brutal stretch of schedules. You went to Hawaii. Then you played Arizona State. You have to be excited for a Pac-12 team to come and play. Then they played California the next night. They played back-to-back Pac-12 games. Then they play. Then they go on the road and play Fullerton. Then they have that Stanford game. Yep. Then they play UC Davis, another team that's proximity. And now they go to Fresno. So uh, the schedule's brutal for Todd Golden in his first year. Of course, you know San Fran had been moving up and moving up in the West Coast and got the 21 wins last time. And that was good enough for Washington State to hire Kyle Smith away. Uh, but Golden from inside the program it just took over. And I think he's doing a fine job. And, you know, while you're 10 and 3, you know, there's there's no there's no complaint at your losses. You know, Stanford's what Stanford's a 10 and 1 team. Yep, exactly. You know, 11 and 1 team, whatever they are. So, you know your losses are at uh, at Hawaii and then you know Stanford. So uh, I test to me, I, I do like San Francisco. And uh, in a uh, afternoon game, guys at four thirty, uh, Portland taking on Boise State, another neutral uh, site game here, Ralph. I'm shocked the totals as low as it is here, but. Um, it, 
it, it continues to drop. I mean, opened up at 137. I'm seeing 135s on the board here. Are we anticipating a little slower paced here uh, action in this game? Well, you know, Boise's Boise's been a uh, Boise's been a pretty up tempo team, um, but you know, it, it's it, it's tough. It's tough to know. I did not watch the Georgia Tech game that they won. Right, and. You know, looking at their box score, you know, they had a couple guys, Alston and Jessup, both played 37 and 38 minutes, Mm. uh, you know, in that game against – in that game. They had the big lead, but Georgia Tech, you know, uh, made a little bit of a run. A little push, yeah. And even though, you know, Boise doesn't play many guys. (laughs) So you're playing in the second of back-to-back. So a lot of times – you know, a slower paced team who is the better team will try to slow it down. Mm-hmm. But then you, you know, he you may look across and say, We don't play another game to Friday. It's no big deal if these guys play. This is only this is only their second game in nine days. So right. it's not like they're winded. Yes, they played yesterday, and yes, they're playing 20 hours later. So, you know, coaching really is so important. I usually don't mess around with back to backs when when the if the better team is up tempo and has played fewer minutes, yes, on a back to back, I lean with the over. But when the better team plays slower, yep. sometimes the better team wants to press the pace because they have the better players and not let that other team hang around. So I don't mess with those totals. Love that. All right, guys. And there you go. A uh, small card uh, here tonight. But don't forget, plenty of action coming up uh, beginning over the weekend. Ralph and I will be back on Monday. Back at it, uh, you know, recouping, recovering, and uh, and rehashing everything that happens uh, on Saturday in these small tournaments. And, of course, getting ready uh, for a new year, 2020 conference play, everything that is college basketball. Ralph, just around the corner. It'll be a nice uh, reprieve here for a couple of days, get the step away. But then, of course, uh, we'll be back at it, getting ready for the weekend, which uh, should be pretty exciting, too, on the college basketball court. And let's not forget sportsmemo.com. Yep. You have anything up today for nine bucks, Joe? I uh, I do. I got my bowl games and uh, and the NFL on a Monday night and everything else up uh, over there. So it's uh, nine bucks, and I have one play yep. up as well for nine dollars. So great day to check out sportsmemo.com or yep. wagertalk.com. Get there, guys, and make sure you have a very happy and safe uh, Christmas holiday season. Whatever you're doing, Ralph and I uh, will be back uh, a week from today, uh, resuming the happy hour tip off show, getting you guys ready to profit in college basketball. Ralph. Ralph, Merry Christmas to you and the family, my friend. Thank you very much. Enjoy your day. Enjoy a couple of days off, and uh, we'll talk in a week from today. Joe, most people leave Santa milk and cookies. You got to freaking leave them suntan lotion because it's still 80 degrees down there. Damn Hate straight you, buddy. Hate you. Give me Gasparilla <laughs> Ball. Good luck to you, Ralph. Merry Christmas, guys. We'll talk to you again next week. See you guys. Merry Christmas.